Hello, welcome back to Level 1 News. Today we're doing uh, government and security news. And also, I realized we never introduce ourselves on the news. We should, prob- we should probably do it. Well, no, if people call you Brian. Someone Everybody. Called, someone called you Brian in the, in the Q&A thread. All the Ryans in the world can uh, engagement challenge here. That's universal. Yeah, this, oh. that's Ryan. I'm Krista. That's Wendell. Wee. Also, we're doing a Q&A very soon. Probably by the time that they see this, we'll probably be filming it in the next few days. So if you have a question for us and you want us to answer it, go to the forum, type it, and we may answer it. Or you could voice dictate it. You don't <laughs> yeah, have to type it. You don't it. have to type. You get somebody else to type it. Google's going to remember that forever, though. Oh, good segue. <laughs> yeah, we learned about this a while back. And uh, actually, they did this more than once. But I think this was the first one, right? It was an arson. And Google did the old geolocation sweep up where they were like, hey, this building burned down. So we're going to need every record that was ever anywhere near this place. And every cell phone. Google was just like, well, okay, yeah, sure, I guess. Did they have a warrant in that case? I don't remember. No. And uh, people were like... Well, well, some of them they have, but not all of them. People were like, well, that's kind of weird. It doesn't seem like something you should be able to do. And they were like, no, we can definitely do that. Now we might actually get to find out if they were allowed to do that. Police sweep Google searches to find suspects. This tactic is facing its first legal challenge. So uh, a couple of... Uh, three kids. Um, two of them are being tried as an adult... They fished. They assumed that the location where a fire had occurred. Oh. oh. Potential spam. Potential spam. It's definitely spam. Um, they assumed that a place where the there was a fire had been Google searched. So they got a warrant for that. I guess that's not a particular place or thing or, or whatever. But hey. Anybody who looked for this address is now being searched. Yeah, and so they use that as a lead to gather even more evidence. They're, the defense attorneys are saying this should probably be thrown out. This is not the best case yeah. for establishing precedent on this, but good lord. Well, I think in most of those cases, the guys did turn out to be guilty, right? It's always yeah. bad for the freedom because it's like, oh, look, it's the they're doing bad things to kids. And it's like, well, yeah, we can't support that, but we need to defend... The right to look up weird stuff on the internet sometimes. And, you know, just to not be looked up by someone else because you're in a place. Let's not forget the, you remember the uh, the Boston Marathon pressure cooker thing? Um, There was a guy who happened to be looking up pressure cookers at work and he got a a visitation Mm. for having only searched for pressure cookers at work. You can't just be using those for totally normal reasons, (laughs) obviously. Obviously. It's, It's bad because... If somebody's got your number and wants to cause trouble for you, they can very easily do so. It's not exactly. I mean, we we haven't seen good police work, so. Now, of course, you can avoid all that if you don't get location tracked. That's very difficult to do in this day and time. You almost have to leave your phone at home yeah. to avoid it. Or get one of those really hipster phones. And then you're probably still going to have to put it in a pouch while you drive. <laughs> we should get some of those pouches for the level one store. <laughs> And California, they are at the forefront of internet law. And a lot of the stuff that they make into law gets picked up everywhere else just because it's annoying to <laughs> not do it for every st- or do it specifically just for that state. But I think they might be overreaching a little bit for this one. Just a little. We got to think back, of course, every time this comes up, we got to think back to the uh, porn verification yeah, laws. Yeah. Kind of the same thing, right? It is, yeah. California's attempt to protect kids online could end adults' internet anonymity. Websites might be forced to verify the ages and other information about visitors unless changes are made. This is, you know, this sounds alarmist, but it's really not. Like, this is, this pattern of let's propose something that's completely unreasonable so that when something else that passes through that is less unreasonable, but still pretty unreasonable by today's standards, will get through. It feels less extreme, but it is still kind of extreme. I would challenge you to think about... Why isn't California attempting to protect kids from licking electrical outlets? If the internet is that dangerous for children, why don't we just keep them off of it? Yeah, exactly. If, if electrical outlets are that dangerous, why don't we put little plastic things in them so that if you have... Mm, we should take those little plastic protector things and put them in the eyes of the children. <laughs> then they'll never have to see online to, to worry about it. I was thinking Ethernet jacks, but okay. I mean, it would, it would work the same, I guess. Yeah, I think a five-year-old would work that out. <laughs> it's like, I need Candy Crush. I need it. <laughs> and uh, bad news for Apple. 
This is a continuing wave of bad news for Apple. Starting, this was like the start of the wave. This was a terrible loss for them, and now it is a total loss. Supreme Court has rejected Apple's bid to continue fighting over two Qualcomm patents. Qualcomm had sued Apple for infringement with its iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. Listen, Apple has been a terrible, terrible actor. When you dig into this and you look at what was going on in court and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I mean, Qualcomm is definitely after money, but they are operating, they have been, they knew this was coming for a long time and they have been really, really diligent about being really careful. Meanwhile, Apple has had this very, I would say, egotistical attitude. They're like, we're Apple, we're going to get away with this. So the exhibits... They did, for a long time. Yeah, the exhibits that Qualcomm submitted from Apple executives were incredibly damning. And this is the company, you know, that's fighting your right to repair devices and is doing malicious compliance things, like making you have to rent 170 pounds of equipment to rent to repair your iPhone, and you're not going to let Randy at the mall kiosk do it. It's fascinating. You really should look into the details of this case. And money... Is definitely a topic that a lot of news stories are about these days. Yeah. Because weird things are happening in the money world. And uh, one of those places is, of course, cryptocurrency, as it is getting slaughtered. And the slaughter continues. You thought the slaughter was over? No. Just getting started. And so the powers that be, who had kind of just turned around on their thoughts on cryptocurrency. If cryptocurrency had crashed two years ago, they would have all looked like oracles. Yeah. Because, uh. but then they had that two years, and they're like, "Oh, I guess we were wrong. Let's go all in." And now, Bitcoin is the only coin the SEC chair will call a commodity. It, it's really like this entire headline is about a throwaway line in an interview that was largely about something else, which is disappointing. But it leaves out poor little Ethereum. Yeah, and a lot of people want Ethereum to be counted the same way. Because the the interviewer was kind of like, "Well, what about other coins?" And he was just like, "No." That one's not got the same branding opportunities. <laughs> it seemed like the interviewer was was gunning to ask about like NFTs or something, not Ethereum. But mm -hmm. uh, he was he was sort of preemptively shot down. So, mm. and if you didn't get in on the crypto wave, maybe you got in the meme stonks, huh? Made a bunch of money and then lost it all, of course. <laughs> and now, because it takes so long for the government to do anything, we're finally getting around to what are we going to do about that to keep it from happening again? <laughs> Uh, fact box, the SEC, oh no, uh, the SEC's response to the meme stock rally. Personally, if I was a shareholder and the, F F uh, and the SEC called my stock a meme stock, I would be very angry. Yeah. Seems like that would be a tort. Also, do you get sent <laughs> to the fact box if you get in trouble? No, if you speak the truth. You get sent to the fact box. <laughs> <laughs> they search your internet history to find things that you've done for to construct a case against you to get you to shut up. This woman looks up a lot of garden pests. Now, the payment for order flow is the big thing that's at stake here, and I do believe that is an excellent rule. We should implement that immediately. There's no reason that these companies should be able to make money by selling your stock trades, even if they do give it to you for free. <laughs> selling your stock trades and executing trades milliseconds before yours based on yours. Well, the HFTs are doing that. I mean, technically, <laughs> Robinhood isn't doing that, but they know it's happening. They're facilitating it. And they're making money off of it. So, yeah, why not? And uh, we are entering into a brave new world as it's, it's a very, uh, probably what you say, like maybe a 15-year lag between modern people who understand technology and people in government who understand technology. Maybe more. So, they're just now... Getting into the whole like online version control thing. They're like, oh, we can harness that for political purposes. Senator posts cryptocurrency bill on GitHub. Chaos ensues. <laughs> the, the sub headline civil comments and criticisms welcome. She's never been on the internet before, no. has she? The, those pull requests, man, it's a lot of fun. You should go check that out. They detailed a couple of them. My favorite one was just uh, eggplant. Just eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> no water emoji after it? No, they, they went old school. Uh, and the, man, <clears throat> when you think about how long it takes for the government to do anything, yeah, how much, how many lobby dollars is old Elon <laughs> pumping into this? See, I don't think he spent any money on this. We had those stories where he was riling up other people to do this for him. Well, the it, cruise companies, yeah, and the uh, airlines, was it? airlines and cruise companies, yeah, yeah and it, buses, and buses, yeah. 
So I guess that's a strong lobby, huh? Because, yeah. wow, it happened fast. The FCC has authorized SpaceX's Starlink system to be used on vehicles in motion. Boats, cars, trains, planes, on automobiles. Look how smug this little guy is. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got fast internet. I live in a van. You know what's fun? It's is, so uh, hot in here. In the business section, we've got stories coming up about how there are people that can't get internet in the middle of the city. Now oh, they can yeah. get Starlink. How pissed would you be, though, if you had to get Starlink? But and you if live in you're in an city? apartment, yeah, they're not going to let you put that on the roof. Yeah, that's true. You're going to have a roof of nothing but Starlink satellites. Uh-huh. And uh, we have a new FCC commissioner. Uh, Rosen Morsel was the interim one. Now we have a new one. And this one seems to be uh, picking up the old anti-China flag once again. The U.S. FCC commissioner wants Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app stores. Well, it was... I've got questions. Based on this, it seems like the application is in violation of the terms of service that you set forth for applications to follow. I would like for you to respond to this by July 5th or take the uh, apps offline. Now, we're recording this before July 5th. Chances are the applications are still up. One wonders what Apple and or Google will have responded. They might be watching this before July 5th, some of them. Oh, yeah, a few of them, I guess. Also, I misspoke there. He's not He's not the chair. He's just a new commissioner. It's also a long weekend here in the States, so they have even less time. Yeah, we got to get through this because, uh, oh, yeah, got to get checked out. <laughs> checked out. Maybe mentally checked out. <laughs> yeah, already checked out. Uh, That's alcohol in his cup. And uh, for a while there, the the SPACs were big, right? All those that special money vehicles. It's like, ah, oh, this is not an investment. It's not a security, but you know, it's got special rules. And uh, they made a lot of money in a short amount of time. A lot of those athletes, they burned some people on yeah. those. But that wasn't the only famous people who did it. Company behind Trump's Truth Social now under investigation by the federal prosecutors. The so-called blank check company is the target of separate securities and exchange commission probe. Yeah, it seemed like this company was started up as basically, hey, we need money. Are you are you outraged at the state of things? Well, this company is going to fix that. And nobody asked any questions. Turns out that might be securities fraud. And it turns out there was way more outrage <laughs> than anybody expected. <laughs> and I put this in government. I don't know. It's maybe not a great government one, but the or local... Business like municipalities and the power structure and everything is is they're down with this yeah so this is an official thing then it could not be without that yeah tesla launches new virtual power plant that pays powerwall owners to help end brownouts i looked at this and as an idea i can't actually find a problem with it this is a great idea this is a common thing with solar um not necessarily that you get paid for it but a lot of times if you have your own solar setup and you're still hooked to the grid, if you generate more than you use, you can give it back to the grid and they'll the, use it elsewhere. This is different because this doesn't pull your power unless it's desperate. Mm. And in that time, you actually get, I mean, you don't get obviously those prices, but you get way more because of the whole Texas thing, right? Mm. Like right now we're paying X for power. We'll pay you X minus five cents. And so they said, Per event, you can expect to get ten to seventy dollars. Now that's at twenty twenty two inflation. <laughs> In five years, it might be more like seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Someone really looked at all the natural disasters we're having. Like, how can I make money off this? I, I mean, it, it, but it does fix it in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah, and at a large scale, if everybody had a little bit of solar generation and everybody had not everybody, but like you know seventy percent north of, that would be tremendously easier on the grid. And, you know, in the time that it takes a power plant to ramp up and ramp down capacity, this could be a distributed way to handle that. It's actually pretty brilliant. And, it, you know, if everyone could just run at least a little bit of their own consumption needs, yeah. that would be good, too. Yeah. You can set a percentage level for how much you want to give before you cut them off for your own emergency supply. So you don't have to have to give all of your power to the company. Well. <laughs> before government mandate. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, eventually there will be soldiers in your house using your power, but that's a different kind of thing. Wasn't that a problem during the revolution? <laughs> not the power part. We even have a whole amendment for that. Not amendment, a constitutional uh, entry. Protection, yeah. Haven't you heard the Constitution is a problematic document? <laughs> so it would seem. 
And over in Russia, some things that were problematic just a few years ago suddenly are being embraced. I wonder what changed. <laughs> Russian parliament has approved a tax break for issuers of digital assets. Uh, look, guys, we're going to give you a break. If you issue digital assets, we're not going to tax that transaction. We'll keep note of it, just in case we ever need to seize those funds for national security purposes. <laughs> <laughs> to fund some of our own activities in other parts of the world. This was not much of a headline, uh, like not much of a, an individual point to look at, but uh, this was actually a New York Times story that the Buffalo News reprinted and we used as a paywall alternative. And they go very in depth on how the, the Chinese Communist Party is ramping up in a big way. China's expanding surveillance allows the state to tighten its grip. Uh, this is a fun article and you should definitely read it. But did you notice the part in there about how if you're a member of the party, you can disappear from logs? The technology is so advanced that if you are part of the party and you go through like a mass transit system or whatever, it doesn't necessarily even log that you were there. There was another instance of, so uh, they're having a heat wave now, just like us. And those poor people who are protesting that the banks that stole from them are out in like 110 degree heat. And then all of a sudden on the official app, they all got COVID. Oh, yeah. We did a story about that. No, it was a new one. Oh, there's another one. This was during, yeah, just like oh. last week. I assume, isn't their president up for his third term or whatever? Is this him cracking down before all that goes through? There is no third term. Like, yeah, there's he not has supposed to, to change. Be. Yeah. Right, yeah. So it's a big hurdle for him to get over. And so he'll just clamp down. They're thinking the zero, zero C policy is going to hurt him very badly with that. Mm. But he won't back down. Nobody will back down. Because they'd have to admit they were wrong. And nobody can't has do that. that. Yeah. Especially not right before an election. Or whatever. whatever <laughs> an election. It. Whatever whatever it is they do over there. <laughs> Faux election. We're going to have those soon, probably. Well, one Happy thing they, July 4th. <laughs> yeah, well, at least we're doing better than them. Another thing that they Someone do the in China, and they do really well, is uh, rape the earth for its resources mm. and then sell them globally. And they want to maintain their grip on that industry. A pro-China online influence campaign is targeting the rare earths industry. This is an MIT technology review. This was amazing. It was very, very effective. So there was a company that was looking at putting in a rare earth processing facility in Texas. And with just a little bit of disinformation, they were able to stir up Texans in the area to, to ask a lot of questions and say, you know, oh my gosh, is this environmentally damaging? What do we have to do? Blah, blah, blah. There are techniques for mining rare earth that are less ecologically damaging and cost more. But um, the motivation for doing this seems to have been partly economic and partly because, well, China exports 80% of the world's rare earths. And that industry doesn't get stood up overnight. So you can't have a conflict with the supplier of rare earths. That's a little problematic. It does seem like we're cruising that way. Using a climate threat to control policy? That's never been done before. <laughs> and India, you know, we talked about the whole uh, California identification thing. And I think you can put that in the same basket of you didn't think about how you were going to do this. You didn't think about the reality of the law you were making. You didn't come up with a plan. Now you're embarrassed. <laughs> India has delayed its VPN rules to log customers' data by three months. So a lot of VPN companies had already started pulling out. And <laughs> India's like, wait, no, come back. Oops. And I think they also started looking into, like, how would we actually enforce this? Yeah. Although that's one of those beautiful laws where you can just kick somebody's door in and they're like, no, we thought they were using a VPN. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to take all of this stuff, obviously. Then we installed a VPN. And Brazil, they're a little bit late to the party, but... Yeah, that's probably good. Maybe. I don't know. I, you never, I never want to see government control on this level, but on the other hand, mm -hmm. it's Apple. Yeah. And you're just like, oh man, I think I got to go with the government here. Brazil is also considering making USB-C chargers mandatory for iPhones, following the EU ruling on the matter and rumblings of a similar ruling in the U.S. Do it, you won't. <laughs> do that, and then let's do right to repair. It's like, oh, yeah. you have to make parts available and document things. You can't just, you know, insert yourself in the middle of every transaction involving your products from now until the end of time. 
And their response to that is like, uh, we don't plan to support those till the end of the time. Are you crazy? <laughs> That's not profitable. You should throw those away. <laughs> also, happy Earth Day <laughs> right after they, you know. Happy Canada Day, too. It was Canada Day on Friday. How dare they schedule their days close to ours? <laughs> they do. It's the same weekend. They're always trying to upstage us. Oh, my God. They want to be us so bad. Well, moving on to security, and we have another big name when it comes to ransomware. Ransom House Extortion Group claims AMD is its latest victim. There's not a lot of details here other than AMD is investigating. It may be like 450 gigabytes of information, but what? We don't know. I, I read this headline as Random House, like the publisher, and I was like, why are they? <laughs> the, they won the, the, uh, the, the contest, and they're just trying to get into AMD. You've won. You've already won. <laughs> trying to think of the guy's name who was johnny carson's co-host that did all that oh that was was that the random house or was that that was publisher's clearing house mm. i think random house is a publisher right publisher's clearing house uh -huh. <laughs> and another big data hack and this one uh you know that's weird because i think in the past i've heard a couple of fringe voices say that this is the reason we can't do this <laughs> California gun owners had lots of their data exposed by the state government. Have you got a concealed uh, concealed carry permit? I've got some bad news for you. Ooh. State government has lost your info. And generally, you know, if you've gone through the trouble of getting a concealed carry permit in California, uh, there was recently a Supreme Court ruling where they, they have to issue permits now. But if you jump through some hoops to get that, you were exposed and they know where you are and they know a lot of other information. Including, and this is the beautiful part about it, flags on whether or not you're a judge or a cop. So that means that people will actually pay attention to this. Ooh. Something might actually get done. Now, I gave some bad information last week. I thought that Kim.com was still involved in Mega, but apparently no. He's not at all, and in fact hates it. <laughs> Kim.com is not happy. He says that Mega is a, a, the, the, a Mega mass piracy report is on the way. See, I, I thought that he, he hates it because it's been used as a prop in the lawsuit against him by his former partners for them to escape uh, the law. Didn't he fight the other side of this four or five years ago? Well, I think it's all kind of a distraction. So on the one hand, if Mega facilitated piracy, uh, the this is the Mega upload replacement. So he created Mega and it's like, oh, it has encrypted links. and There's a lot to unpack here. Um, the U.S. is trying to ex extradite Kim.com, and it seems to have secured, the U.S. seems to have secured testimony against Kim.com from his former business partners uh, in exchange for not extraditing them related to pirating copyrighted material. But I know, I'm pretty sure he made the argument that, like, just because we link to pirated material, that's not pirated material. Right, yeah. Now he's making the exact opposite argument. Well, Mega is not linking to it anymore. It is actually now hosting it. Oh, I didn't know that part. I, I thought they said that the it's something about the links. It's encrypted. So, But if you have a public link, then everything you need to decrypt the public link is in the link. So theoretically, you could enforce some kind of like something against it. You know what? That's still a bitch move. Yeah. To screw everybody else. <laughs> Just because you're in a fight with the U.S. government. Now, I understand that the U.S. government is... <laughs> a worthy opponent. They're screwing you. <laughs> but there's no need to tattle on everybody else. You know what that's like? That's when uh, the teacher got one of the things wrong and answered it, like gave everybody a correct answer. And then the one person who actually got it right is like, um, wait a minute. Actually, that's Cam.com right now. Don't be like that. That person also, <laughs> you know, you get to the end of the class and then someone's like, do we have any homework? Oh, yeah. And it's like, don't. Don't bring that up. Oh, yeah, you do. I uh, forgot. Oh. And another router attack, and this one specifically attacks your crappy routers. Man, this would be a great time to uh, advertise our new video series, but it's not ready yet. It's so we not. Can't talk it's being about edited. It. You can check our old videos from like years ago on building your own. Uh, Paul, Paul's hardware just built his own PFSense router. A wide range of routers are under attack by new, unusually sophisticated malware. Zuo Rat. Uh, listen, I got some bad news. If your embedded systems are based on the MIPS architecture, I believe the MIPS architecture is basically end of life and on life support. It doesn't have address space layout randomization as far as I know. It's very, very insecure. This malware uh, capitalizes on certain hardware bugs and also 
the fact that these devices have been neglected for years and you're really going to have to replace these devices. There might be software updates for some of them, but it's, it's on life support. Let it go. Old Yeller needs to die. It's fine. Once you get this, it's going to man in the middle everything on your network and infect everything that it can. It seems to be pretty effective at it, too. It's very sophisticated, probably sponsored by a nation state. Yeah, this is another one of these malwares where it doesn't seem like this is just, you know, like hobbyist Russians doing this. <laughs> Seems like it's very well funded. Yeah. Mm. Maybe this is what uh, the Pegasus, the NSO is working on now that they're trying to sell Pegasus. <laughs> like, ah, oh, we got a new product. Man. And Firefox, you know, they, they've always been a pretty privacy-focused browser. It's a shame. What's their market share? Like, share like 5%? percent gone down. Oh, yeah. I'm not doing great, but ooh, they're trying. Firefox can now automatically remove tracking from URLs. Facebook and other sites will no longer be able to track you from site to site. So if you've ever gone to Amazon.com and copy-pasted a product link to email somebody, there's a lot more crap in the URL than you need other than just the product ID. Don't email them the product ID and click on it because then... Amazon can connect those dots. Delete everything after the question mark. Yep. Yeah. Now, that does not universally work because some websites will put legitimate stuff after the question mark, but this Firefox thing is a blacklist, so it knows what to look for. Excellent. And it'll put the URL back together. That's nice. <laughs> in, in before the site designers start with, like, randomized UUID URLs, and it's like, well, there's no defeating that. Marketplace does that same thing, too. We're talking about with like Amazon where it'll have like the big tracking thing like oh, I hate that and then they also track if the pixel is on the other person's computer yeah. Yeah. so they get you both ways and if you send it to somebody who doesn't have a pixel somehow they get one uh. OpenSea seems like just a cesspool of danger I can't imagine why anybody would register an account with them but people continue to do so <laughs> Vendor shared OpenSea user email addresses with a quote unquote unauthorized party. Huh. This is after last week when they got caught somebody using their admin status to do insider trading. Mm. Oops. It seems to me like some of these guys in the, the fintech space, not the most trustworthy. <laughs> seems to attract a certain crowd. It, it seems like the trust has gone down along with the average price of Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Well, desperation, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, this is a paywall alternative. Unfortunately, the CNBC article, this was more about the ports. The original one, which I think was Bloomberg, was talking about literally taking over ship controls yeah. because for whatever reason, they're Internet of Things now. <laughs> Hackers can bring ships and planes to a grinding halt, and it could, could become much more common. So it turns out that these... Giant container ships are having, you know, increasingly they need a smaller and smaller crew to operate. It's all automated. There's some software that's controlling ships as they come into port and ships as they can go across the ocean. What if that software is crippled? Will it? Will a skeleton crew be able to pilot the ship? And the answer is no. That's kind of terrifying if you're someone who works on that ship. Yeah. There's a, there's, there's, this says that there are a lot of those kind of cyber attacks going on, but it's really, everything that I read about this was very scant on details. Um, one of the articles used a ship that had broken down, like their computer system crashed or their satellite uplink crashed or something after a storm, and they were basically stranded. There was nothing they could do. They had to, People had to like fly out in a helicopter or something to come and get them. Yep, that sucks. And they point out in the ports that... Uh the other way that they're doing this is kind of like once you get control of all that shipping software, then you can make a container just disappear. Mm. Which, if anybody's ever seen season two of The Wire, <laughs> they know that they were doing that 20 years ago. <laughs> but I guess it's easier now. And remote work. That's the new normal, right? Everybody's doing remote work. So how do you do job interviews for remote work? Well, you do them remotely. Are there risks involved? Yes. <laughs> FBI says people are using deep fakes to apply for remote jobs. Not just deep fakes, real time deep fakes. Fake video, distorted voices. Like, that's crazy. So the, the FBI said, and like this isn't anything the FBI is doing proactively. They're saying, hey, we've had an unusually high number of complaints that job applicants are applying that don't exist. So companies are interviewing people and they're making it through the interviews pretty well and they probably would hire them but then like they'll cough or something and their video doesn't cough mm. because there was no 
learning phase, they didn't have footage of that person sneezing or coughing. Pretty sure we can fix that in 2.0. Well, you got to film somebody and just throw dust in their face, right? Now, now, what happens when it becomes like... it? Let's suppose that you have somebody that has severe social anxiety disorder. What happens if they identify as like their talking cat avatar and to not interview them and, you know, offer them the remote job is some kind of ableism? We just let the Russians take it. <laughs> It'd be better at that point, right? You know, oh, you know what? Jinping, just take over. It couldn't be any worse. <laughs> it seems like we're already there almost. For better or worse. Now, we didn't talk about the ISP version of this last week, right? We did not. We talked about... Okay, yeah. So, the Hermit Spyware. We talked about it last week. If you need a refresher, go watch... I don't know which, which version it was. We probably what did security on Monday of last week. Uh, it's a crazy new spyware, and it's getting into people's stuff, but it's a, a phishing challenge. So, how do you guarantee someone will click on a, a link? Well, you frustrate them. How do you frustrate them? Google warns internet service providers that uh, that it helped to distribute Hermit spyware. The company found victims in Italy and Kazakhstan. So, Apple and Google both have removed the software, but they found that parts of the software were distributed on uh, legit servers, otherwise legit servers. Um, this really but the trick was you turn off your service. Yeah. So your ISP gets tricked into turning off your service. And then you're like, oh, God, where's my service? And you get a text message like, oh, there's a service interruption. Click here to find out more. Well, guess what? That's Hermit. Mm. That's the Hermit. So if you've experienced that recently, Google encourages you to look for the Hermit. <laughs> Go also, into the woods. I'm also really annoyed that once again, we have, you know, spyware that lives on your phone immutably and it has to be called to attention in order for Apple and Google to find it how do they not as worried as they are about jailbroken phones and blah 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 how do they not have tools to help users spot this kind of thing because they don't care as, uh, they're, they're, doesn't mean anything for their profits maybe yeah they're so worried about side loading is that they want to stop people from side loading profitably but criminals that can side load malware that's basically okay how much harder did Microsoft go on anti-piracy than it ever did improving Windows? Yeah. For the entire life cycle. It's nothing new. They've always been doing this. I hate this reality. And you can hate it a little bit more, although this is a headline where when I read this, I was like, well, I kind of assumed they already were. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised that they're... Verizon definitely was. Remember the Evercookie? Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they just started. T-Mobile has started selling your app data to advertisers, but you can opt out in a few taps. So... Advertising companies are really excited about this because this is network level traffic analysis. Even though your traffic is encrypted, T-Mobile can infer certain things. Like if your traffic is bound for servers that are known to be associated with Airbnb, they know that you're an Airbnb user. If your traffic is bound for Facebook, they know that you're a Facebook user. Netflix, they know that you're a Netflix user, so on and so forth. There's, there's only you know, a few hundred applications that most people use on a daily basis that can be used to build a profile for you. And controlling speech is critical. Free speech is not allowed. And toward that end, obviously, you must be monitored at all times to protect the children. <laughs> Valorant will start listening to your voice chat in July in order to train a language model for future disruptive behavior reports. All right, this is it's another another level one of my... We can turn this into a skit. You know, I want, you know, like a 12-year-old screaming profanities into his Xbox Live headset. But on the other end, it's being translated by a machine into like an older British gentleman. And it's not profanities or anything anymore. It's like, oh my gosh, did you see that wall wall? And then at the, at the remote end, it's, pardon me, sir, can you <laughs> please... <laughs> Where are my heels? <laughs> That's where we're going to. The AI is like, I would I would like to experience the world without those things. And the AI is quietly just going to substitute whatever you need. Freaking feeder. <laughs> Sir, it I'm appears like, that you're feeding ult charge to the enemy team. I want to see the spreadsheet where you have column A is racial slurs and column B is what you're going to replace them with. <laughs> That's the same number of syllables. <laughs> oh, it's Kyle Wiggers. Haven't seen a lot of his stories lately. He's, he's big in the security world, it seems. And uh, this is the big supply chain threat. What are we going to do about it? And once again, the answer is, ah, just let us take care of this. Yeah. You don't need to worry <laughs> about this. We'll, we'll take care of all of that. 
Google launches advanced API security to protect APIs from growing threats. Start taking your bets now about when they kill it. Or they just use it to control. So the modern application design for the web is basically you have a giant JavaScript blob that runs client side and interacts with an API. But because there's so little server interaction other than just a traffic flood, it's harder to tell malicious traffic from legit traffic, especially if it's unauthenticated. And so Google is providing tools to try to give you a more comprehensive breakdown of things that are happening with your API associated with client and IP address and a whole bunch of other things, which in my opinion is probably long overdue. And finally, <laughs> boy, is there anybody that the customs won't pay for data? How many of these contracts have we already talked about? You see, it could be that. It could also be your business goes away because it's on the fringes unless you cooperate with us. Yeah. It's like, okay. Well, I think they are paying them, though. So we got the DMVs shoveling data to them. at uh, The phone companies. There's some other uh, license, like private license plate companies that are giving them data. Oh, and yeah, the license plate scanner stuff. We learned right? a couple of other ones recently. But now you can add one of the, the meme companies. Cryptocurrency Titan Coinbase is providing quote unquote geo tracking data to immigrations and customs officials. So, if you're here illegally, I wouldn't <laughs> trade crypto. <laughs> How are you going to pay taxes on it anyway? That's a joke because they don't pay taxes. It's pretty funny because um, we're, it's like, I need to know Google searches on. I need a, a warrant for all the Google searches that people performed in this geographical area that don't have a known social security number to Google. And that's that's getting to be just you know one or two table joins away uh, in this modern world, which is really scary. Yep, it's terrifying. And there's no it. escape from it. Yeah. But we got a lot of business news. <laughs> and it's mostly bad. See, it's fun, though, because last Friday was, was it, was it the end of the quarter? January, February, March, April, May, June, yeah, yeah. End yeah. of the half. So there was a lot of financial news, a lot of company news. There's a lot of those kinds of things that are dumped before a holiday weekend in hopes that you won't notice. We noticed. We're, we're recording right before that <laughs> holiday weekend. I think it's the worst first half of a year since the 70s. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's bad. And things are only forecast to be worse in the second half of the next of the next year. So we got a lot of business news we need to talk about tomorrow. It's going to be a long one. Yeah, this has happened like three or four times, I think, since then. And every time, it's not been good. It's bad. We'll see you then. We'll still be here with you, though. We'll suffer together. You can take solace in that. <laughs>